So later on tonight, we are going to, we're so fortunate that we're going to have a performance by one of my favorite cats on the scene. A guy named Paul Schaefer is going to be here. Now, Paul and I were having a chat the other day, and we were reminiscing about when we first met. It was over 40 years ago. I was an assistant engineer, and uh, Paul was playing keyboards on a Broadway soundtrack album for a show called Magic Show. And uh, we worked many times after that, but the last time that I worked with Paul was on his Coast to Coast album. And the song that we were doing, which was at Murray Weinstock's Krypton Studios, is Murray Weinstock. Where are you, Murray? I can't see you. We were doing an homage to the Memphis Stax soul sound. The song was called What is Soul? And the two guys that were co-producing and co-writing the song with Paul, one was the uh, guitar player from that amazing Booker T and the NGs rhythm section, the legendary Steve Cropper writer of, of Sitting on the Dock of the Bay and In the Midnight Hour. And the other co-writer and co-producer was a guy named Don Covey. Now, I love Don Covey because he would come into the studio and he'd come up to me and he'd say, Glenn, and I'd say, Don, and he'd say, are we going to make history today? And I'd say, we're going to make history. And ladies and gentlemen, are we making history tonight? Yes, we are. And then when Don would finish an anecdote, he would always say, and this time, I'm not lying. Now, Paul had big ambitions for this song that we were working on because he wanted to reunite the soul plan. In the mid-60s, the top R&B singers from Atlantic Records made one record together. And after that, lots and lots of people wanted to get that, that group back together, but to no avail. But Paul was determined to do it. He wanted each of the surviving members to sing a verse on this song. So he got Benny King in uh, of Stand By Me fame and Bobby Womack. And then it was time for Don Covey to do his verse. So we put him out in the studio and gave him his headphones. And I hit the record button. And he's moving and he's grooving. But the needle isn't moving. We can't hear his vocal. Now, I know I checked that microphone five times. Paul Schaefer and Steve Cropper look over at me like, what's going on? I look over at my assistant engineer, Ann Pope. Ann is here tonight somewhere. And she just shrugs her shoulders. We finally figure out that though Don is moving his mouth and moving, nothing is coming out of his mouth. He's not singing. The take comes to an end, and Schaefer gets on the talkback, and he says, uh, Don, uh, that was really good, but can we just try one more to see if we could top it? The next guy to come in was Wilson Pickett, who we know as the Wicked Mr. Pickett, and he has that name for a reason. You know, working in the studio could be a dangerous thing. When I worked with the drummer Buddy Rich, he threatened to kill me if I didn't put the microphone where he wanted it to be. Now, the story that I heard about the Wicked Mr. Pickett, and I don't know if it's true or not, was that he got into a fight with his bass player, and he poked his bass player's eye out with a fireplace poker. So I was always very deferential to the artists that I worked with. So Wilson went out into uh, the studio to do his thing, and he sings his vocal, you know, Wilson Pickett, Mustang Sally, Land of a Thousand Dances, Midnight Hour, one of the inventors of rock and roll. He does an amazing job. And after the take, Schaefer gets back on the talk back again. He says, you know, Wilson, that was really good, but there's just one line I'd like to redo. And before Schaefer got through with that line, Wilson ripped off his headphones, came charging into the control room, grabbed me by my shirt, stuck his finger in my face, and said, you plucking, you chicken plucking now. Obviously, obviously he couldn't tell one bald-headed Jew from another. I saw my life flash before my eyes, and I immediately threw Schaefer under the bus. I said, it wasn't me, Wilson, it was that guy. Now, we had one last guy to get on this record to reunite the soul plan, and that was Solomon Burke. Now, I had worked with King Solomon Haley Selassie Burke on a record called Soul Alive, and I really liked Solomon. He told me that he had a woman and a car in every city in America. So when he was on tour and he landed in Chattanooga, there'd be a wife and a Cadillac waiting for him. Now, Paul was very excited to get Solomon on the phone. Uh, but when he came back into the control room after speaking with Solomon, he was dispirited. So we asked Paul what happened. 
And he said that Solomon said that not only would he not sing on the record, but that he wrote the song, and if we used it, he would sue. Now, you may not believe what I'm telling you here tonight. You can ask Paul later if any of this is true. But I'm telling you, this time, I'm not lying. 